Welcome back to Don's Life. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. Today we're gonna to have some fun with some lighting and install these. Let's go. Now let's take a closer look at what we're installing today. So Nylight, who sponsored today's video, has sent over a four strip LED underglow package. This one here gives us two four foot strips, two three foot strips. We have a remote control for quick access to all of our functions. We can also use an app on our phone. This remote control controls a lot of different options here. So we have a number of things that you can see here from different scene modes to automatic modes to sensitivity settings, brightness settings, have it go to music, directly go to RGB or white, we got a bunch of cable ties here, depending on how we want to install it. We've got these little brackets that fit over top of the light with some little screws. We got adhesive on the back of every strip. This here is a fuse tap that I purchased separately. I'm choosing to install it this way, but you don't need to do it that way. You can go directly to your battery, which I have it set up here like that. And then this little box is controlled with your remote or the app. Simply hit the button, turn it on or off. Now you don't have to have this within line of sight. You can be anywhere inside or outside the vehicle within a reasonable distance and still control it. I'll have it behind my back here and it turns it on and turns it off just fine. So that's gonna make it easy for this installation because we don't have to keep this box within line of sight to have an infrared connection. We're going to install it on my BMW M4. I just completed an oil change and while I have it up in the air, that's gonna make it a little easier to install this underglow kit. Now, like I said, you have multiple ways that you could choose to install this. I've got a, a positive terminal under here and a ground that I could connect it to, but I also have the battery in the trunk and I also have a main fuse panel in the trunk. So that's where I'm gonna use that T-tap to get power. Come over here and I'll show you how I'm gonna wire it up. So I've taken the liner out of here already so you can see this a little better. But right there is my main fuse panel for the back of the vehicle. And I found a spot right here or here or here, empty spots that have live power. I'm gonna tap that location. I put a five amp fuse in there and then I'm going to run the wiring outside the vehicle from this location. So depending on your vehicle, I actually have a rubber grommet underneath this box and there's a gap here that I can run some wires through. I'm going to pass the wires through there, seal it up get all the wiring to the outside of the car. So I just have the control box nestled in here and hooked up to that fuse tap and grounded on this ground right here where my dash cam is also grounded. Now something to keep in mind before you get going with your installation is that these strips are directional. So if there's a pattern that you decide to run, the direction of that pattern is gonna depend on which way that you flip these strips. Now I've already figured out that these are gonna be my passenger and front strip and these are gonna be my driver's side and rear strip. When they leave the harness or the control box, which I have right here, you can see it splits at some point to two sides. So one is going to these two strips and one side's going to these two strips. I just disconnected it here, that's why it shut off. Should be back on now. So it does remember the last setting you had it on, which I think is really good. So I decided this is my passenger in front because they're together on the harness. And then this is my driver's and rear, they're together on the harness. So when that purple light was to leave, and I don't necessarily have them laying the right way on here, but when that purple light is to leave or move, what's gonna happen is it's going to flow from the back around this way. And it's going to flow from the side around this way. So everything kind of originates in this corner and then goes around the vehicle like that, and then starts over or bounces back or whatever the pattern's gonna be. That's the way I'm choosing to do it, so just give that some consideration before you start the mounting. Now remember, this installation is on a BMW M4. It's gonna vary by vehicle. There's gonna be a lot of opinions out there on how you wanna wire it up. I'm doing it this way, so if you have any questions about wiring it, the easiest way is just directly to the battery or a fuse somewhere under your dashboard. Most vehicles have these up front. They're not all in the back like this one. But I did undo this box so I could get to this grommet. The grommet's right here. This goes right down to the ground, not too close to the exhaust. So we are going to cut a hole in this, run the wires through, back up in here, seal it, actually put some silicone on here so it's airtight and watertight. And then we should be able to just go and start mounting the strips. There 
we go. Got it in. Okay, we got the hardest part done. That was putting the LED strip under the back trunk area because I have a dual exhaust right there and I have to worry about heat and I want the light strip to be far enough back that we can actually see it. So I believe that I achieved that. So what I did is I hooked up some pieces of metal strapping and I created a bit of a lattice for me to zip tie the light strip too. So I'll show that kind of as I'm talking here. But we do have it wired up in the trunk temporarily. I'll tidy all this up in a minute. But right now it's just set up there so I can do my testing. And once I have everything in place, I like the way it works, I'll tighten up everything properly, put the cover on, lower the car so we're closer to the ground, and then we'll have to check it out. But let's do a test right now first. Now keep in mind with my install, the circuit that I hooked up to is live for about 10 minutes after the vehicle has been shut off. So if I open the door, it's gonna wake up that circuit because right now I can't turn it on, nothing's happening. But I'm gonna open the door, that'll wake up the systems, then it'll have power. That's similar to if I had the ignition on. So the nice thing about this car is I'm not gonna have to worry about draining the battery because once I've shut it off and left it alone, even if this is on, that circuit's gonna shut off in about 10 minutes and then no power is drawn. So just keep that in mind, however you're hooking yours up to whatever vehicle, that little control box is always drawing a little bit of current so we can talk to this remote or to your app. So it's kind of like in a standby mode. So you might wanna hook it up to a switch. For me, the switch is built into the circuit after a 10 minute timer. I'll just open the door to wake it up. So now the car is awake and now I can turn it on. So that's done, but it's hovering. It's hovering this high off the ground, but other than that, it's done. Let's just get the camera under there and have a little peek for you. So now I just have to attach that underneath the side and I think I'm going to use these brackets that were included because this car has a nice flat panel all the way around the vehicle, these should screw into there nicely. One side down, one to go. Okay, we're almost there. We got three quarters of it done. We got the back, both sides. Now you just have to do the front. I have my carbon fiber lip right here just so I can figure out where that goes. And then this will have to go behind it. I just wanna make sure I don't interfere with the mounting points. So let's uh, finish this up and then we get to see it. We're like 95% done. Everything's attached properly. All the cables are in. All the excess cable in between each LED light strip is bundled up with a cable tie, tucked in somewhere nicely and neatly, and also out of the way so it can't be snagged on anything. You definitely want to make sure you take the time to run your wires and conceal them properly and not have anything drooping down. You just got to be very careful there. I don't have my front lip on right now. I test fitted it to see where I needed to put that front strip. But the reason I don't have it on, nor will I have it on for a while, is because we're still dead of winter here. It's the middle of February, and there's just too much ice and snow outside. I don't want to damage it. So down the road, we're going to give you some footage with the full body kit on there properly. But for now, I'm going to have to give you some footage in the dark without that front piece on. So I think it'll look better once the front piece is on. I don't even know what it looks like yet because it's too bright in here to really tell. I just have to permanently connect the power in the back put the trunk liner back in. If you're wondering what I'm doing here, I just have my battery maintainer hooked up because when you're doing electrical work and all the testing I was doing, I didn't want to discharge the battery. So I'm just unhooking this now. It's not a bad idea. Now remember where that grommet came in, I had cut a little hole. So I want to make sure that that's sealed. So I have a little bit of extra caulking here. I'm just going to make sure that no moisture at all can penetrate this area. I'm going to go overkill because why not?
let's have a quick sneak peek in the light. I'll keep it one color just for now. Now we'll just take it outside when it gets dark and get you some real footage. do a quick 30 second demonstration of the app. Right now it's on this aqua color. I have a purple wrap, let's make it purple. So you can pick any color on the color wheel here. You can adjust the brightness. We can also go into music, for example, pick a song and it'll pulse to the beat of the music. I can't demo that right now, I'll get a copyright strike. There are a ton of styles. There's 256 different styles. So find out the style you like. Let's pick 71. There's mode 71. Maybe we don't like that, we want mode 79. So pick the one that's your favorite or a group of them and there they are. You can have them easily accessible by number. We can increase the speed of whatever mode we're doing and you can see that it's going pretty fast. Well, we can slow that pulse down and now it should pulse a lot slower. It's taking longer to happen, but see it's moving slower. So there's just more examples of what you can do. The app has a ton of stuff in it. So I'd probably use the color wheel the most often. But you have lots of choices and that's the main thing. Well, there we go, we got the Underglow installed. I try to be as thorough as I can, think ahead of my videos, share my techniques with you. You can really install something like this in any vehicle. If it's something that you like, I'll leave a link in the video description below. Thanks again, Nylight, for sending this over. But if you like today's video, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. We'll talk to you next time.